Hey guys, welcome to L&D Home. In this video, we are gonna be tackling this chair. I found a really cool product at Walmart to give this chair a little bit of a refresh. So I'm gonna be sharing the entire process with you guys, including any tips, tricks, do's, or don'ts that I learn along the way. So let's go ahead and just jump on. Let's real quickly talk about the product we are gonna be using. This is the Rust-Oleum Outdoor Fabric Paint, and I picked mine up in the color medium gray. Now I know this is outdoor paint, but I figure if this paint can hold up to the elements outside, it can withstand my kids, right? We're gonna find out. This can was about $12, which at first scared the living daylights out of me because I thought, what if I need more than one? That's kind of expensive. But when I think about how much I really hate the color of that chair and how much slip covers cost, $12 or even $24 if I have to buy two, totally worth it. The first tip I want to share before we drag this piece of furniture downstairs is to do a test patch. I just took the back of the cushion and I took it out to the garage and did a test patch. You want to make sure that it is not only the color that you want, but that it's going to sit really nicely and feel really good. And I have to tell you, it feels pretty much like the normal fabric in this spot. I don't feel any difference. It's not sticky and I do really like the color. So while you are watching me struggle to get this piece of furniture down the stairs because my husband is at work, I want to give you tip number two for painting your furniture with this particular paint. Make sure you clean it really, really well. The back of the can says to prep, you need to clean it really well. So I just took my shop vac, I vacuumed it all down and wiped it down. The last thing you want to do is spray in all that dust, grime, and dirt. So make sure your furniture piece is nice and clean. We are almost ready to start painting, but before that, tip number three. Tape off anything that you don't want to get paint on. I love the natural wood legs on this, so I wanna make sure no paint touches them. So make sure you tape off anything that you don't want painted. Another trick that I found when painting this furniture as I started is to go in different directions. At first, I really started to go with kind of the grain of those stripes that I have in my furniture. But as I went on, I noticed I was missing some spots. So if you have a really textured piece of furniture, I suggest going in different directions. Maybe go with the grain the first time, but then the second coat go against. I found that it really helped me to go up and down, but to also do a side to side motion as well to make sure I was getting in all of those nooks and crannies on my piece. I want to share my first don't with you on this project, and that is to neglect to fully prep your piece. Yes, we cleaned it really well, but what I didn't account for were all the pills and those pieces that I had on my furniture from wear and tear. I have a sweater shaver upstairs. I should have grabbed that out, but I didn't. And as I was painting, I was noticing the paint was really clinging to those pilled spots, and it did not look so great. So don't neglect to fully prep your piece. If it's old and you have a lot of pills, please make sure that you shave those off so that you get a completely perfect finish in the end. Another great tip is to flip your furniture piece over. That way you can see everything from different angles and make sure that you're covering all of the space so you don't have any of that pre-existing color showing through. Once you flip that piece of furniture over, you can really see everything nice and clear and get a perfect coat. All right, guys, let's talk final results and cost. I ended up having to buy four, y'all, four cans of this paint. Each can was $11.97 a piece, so that puts me at about a grand total of around $50 for this project. I know what you're thinking. You could have bought a slipcover for 50 bucks. You're not wrong, but here's the deal with slipcovers. We've tried them all. We initially bought a slipcover for this chair when we moved in, 60 bucks. And by the time we realized we absolutely hated it, we were past our return policy, so that $60 went straight to Goodwill. We have also tried several slipcovers since then, and we've had to return them, either because they were too drapey, the fit was not right, the two cushion ones just didn't fit the way they were supposed to, or the color was not close to what was shown online. So we have been through the ringer with slipcovers. So while I spent way more than I wanted to for this project, 
I'm okay with that. I love the way this turned out. I love the color. I love that I can still see the texture of the chair. And I love that it doesn't look like I just threw a piece of fabric on top of my chair and called it a day. So at the end of the day, it's really up to you to decide if this is going to be a cost-effective painting way for your furniture. If you're thinking, I'm going to repaint my couch, I would advise you maybe to hold on and really invest in a nice slip cover. By the time you buy a bunch of cans of this $12 paint to paint an entire couch or a large piece, you could probably get a high quality slip cover for that. But if you're doing a smaller piece like mine or something even smaller like an ottoman, then it might be cost effective and worth it for you to try this paint. It's a really, really good paint. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and let's see how this bad boy turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. Make sure you check out the video and the playlist up above. And as always, please subscribe. You don't want to miss out on any of our future videos. And remember, you guys are awesome sauce.